taking a look at a Leatherman Squirt E4. This is the uh, version of the Leatherman that's basically sold at Radio Shack and it's wire cutters instead of being scissors or regular pliers. Um, just picked this one up new today at the Radio Shack and we'll uh, bust into it here. First off, I've mentioned packaging in the past and this is I hate this kind of packaging. This is definitely the worst kind of packaging I like to see. It's annoying and it's just annoying. So I'm trying to try to not bust my table up here as I bust into this. I guess they do this so people don't steal stuff at the store, but of course I'm sure criminals have figured out some way to get past this that's fast and as easy as possible. So I just hate to waste my time and do stuff that's semi-dangerous. That seemed to work pretty good for cutting it open though. So I'm just going to pry that top off. I also like to keep my packaging at least for a while when I buy something. And uh, obviously this I could care less about. I guess I could probably recycle it or something. But um, what I'm interested in is keeping the paperwork. And when it comes all goofy like this, it just doesn't lend itself to being kept. Um, I've got all the instructions for it. Not that you need instructions for a multi-tool, but like I say, in case there's any question or... I don't know, somebody I know needs something to read. I like to keep these around for at least a little while, and uh, these just don't really lend themselves to, to being stored. I'm holding it up, and I guess I could probably just leave it like that, but um, anyway, I like to see stuff just on a little bit less packaging. Let's get to the knife, though. Um, we're looking at a Radio Shack version of the Leatherman E4, so the other ones are the Squirt and the... Um, I don't know what the, I guess the other, the other ones are called squirts, but they're the um, plier version. So the S4 for scissors and the P4 for pliers. And this one's the E4 for electrician, I guess. Um, I'm just messing around right now, but let me get into it. It folds up very small, very light. I'm going to try zooming in a little bit here. If that'll work and then uh, we'll take a look at its dimensions we're only talking about a little over two inches by less than an inch without getting super accurate it's about a less than half inch um, wide it opens up fairly easily but it doesn't open so easily that it's going to come apart in your pocket it's under spring tension so if you had this on a key ring or just on a lanyard in your pocket which is the way i carry my version that uh, I carry normally, the pliers, um, it's not going to just open randomly in your pocket and it's great. Those same s springs make it a, a regular pair of pliers where they, you have to squeeze them closed and they open themselves, self-opening. So, uh, you know, they've definitely engineered this well. And obviously the big difference here is the um, wire strippers. Um, not that you're going to need wire strippers every day, but depending on what you do for a living, you may use those quite a bit. And uh, there are regular pliers here at the end. I'm still getting used to this camera, and I guess I can't zoom in as much as I'd like. But you can see there, there are regular plier tips at the end there, and then there's a cutter towards the base. And honestly, for the way I use mine, I don't need to strip wires very often, but that's about as much as I ever need from the pliers would be maybe to pull a splinter out um, and then every once in a while to cut something. So for me, I'm thinking I might try to carry these every day and see what happens unless it becomes a you know, real problem. I kind of like the idea of having wire strippers. It's kind of neat. Because um, every once in a while I do need to strip wires. I do do electrical work once in a while. And uh, we've got the regular tools. One of the reasons I like the squirt so much is because the tools work without having to open the pliers. So I can get to all the tools real easily it's got a fairly substantial um, Phillips here with an actual cross shape and it's not just a cheap um, one it's a decent Phillips small not eyeglass small but fairly small Oops. and then we've got this um, regular screwdriver with a bottle opener and we've tested the bottle openers in the past and they do work we've got the nail file opens away from the lanyard loop uh, just like the blade does which is you know well thought out and it also opens at the hinge so that it doesn't lend itself to you know imagine if the blade were at this end and this opened on you it'd be awkward 
This way it remains, you know, a solid grip for your knife blade. A decent knife blade, sharp of course. It says Leatherman. Um, the story I hear and the story I tend to assume is correct is that Leatherman can't put Made in America on here because some of their components are imported which I don't really have a problem with bringing in a blade or something from another country um, but in what California they can't claim to be Made in America if uh, the components are made someplace else so even though they don't say it they are Made in America for the most part and uh, you know, unless I'm mistaken, and feel free to flame on if I'm mistaken there. You know, make your rude comments or whatever. But uh, I'm a big fan of Leatherman. This one is very well made. And uh, I'm going to be real happy to carry this one around. I've been carrying the blue P4, which is the vert same thing except with pliers. And uh, the only problem I have with it at all is that it's a little too subtle. And I'm thinking that even though I don't like carrying things in red, I might see this if I pull it out accidentally with my keys or something I think this might catch the eye a little bit more so anyway great little tool definitely recommend getting them uh, they're kind of pricey they're about 40 bucks when you buy them new I bought this one new because I guess I splurged a little bit but uh, all my others I bought off of eBay um, unless somebody really really damaged it um, I've had no problems buying stuff used um, to also check out the forums you get a lot better deals on the forums I just didn't want to wait for a good deal to come along uh, when I bought my others, so I ended up buying them on eBay, which you can just usually get a little more consistently. But uh, anyway, check them out. They're good pliers. Highly recommend them. If I was had a star rating system, you know they'd get top ratings from me.